And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, with me today is Z Garcia. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> and today we're taking a look at the most interesting game in the world. And you're gonna have to pronounce this because I can't. I'm not I'm not even giving it a shot. Alright. This is called Heartland in English. Heartland. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, when I, I think I don't know if it was you first brought it to a meetup or someone else. That's right. And I saw it and I said, well that doesn't look interesting at all. Cover oh. is not particularly evocative, though it is quite well done. It looks like something that would be sold at Wegmans. You know, they have in the corner of their games. And then I opened up the box and looked at the pieces and I was even less impressed because they just looked boring. Um, but they said try it out, have fun with it. So I'm always wanting to give a game a shot, so let's see if it's any good. Here's where you would normally see Mr. Tom Vassell dumping a game. However, this is my game. This is my copy. Consider this the dump for the game. There you go. So here at the board, which has a score track going around the outside, you can see there's different kinds of um, produce here. You got potatoes and weed and um, uh, corn and beets and, and rapeseed. And you also have a section over here, this is called the barn, which has a track for each of these. And you're going to put a cube of your color on each track. And you also put two barns out here. And then you're going to have some tiles here that are placed. On each track there's three tiles. Uh, one that's from one to five points. You don't know what it is. There's five of them, so there's one, two, three, four, five, and then there's one at six to ten, and then eleven to fifteen. Those are placed on top of those. These tiles are placed uh, differently each game, so are the barns. What I have here is shown for a four-player game, although we can add a yellow color and make this go up to five players. Now, players are going to have a handful of three tiles. They also will have uh, five single tiles, one tile for each of the five different types of crops. But these tiles will be random tiles. So here you can see I have a corn, corn, a beet, beet, and I have a rapeseed and potato. Now, let's say I play the rapeseed and potato. On my turn, I have to play a tile onto the board. So I could play uh, this tile like this, and when I do that, I'm making two fields. I'm making a field of potatoes here, and I'm making a field of rapeseed. Now, I can take points from these two different ways. I can take uh, two points, because I made a, a, a field that was size two, although I would have actually put it here, see? So I would get a, a field of size three, and then the rapeseed one would give me two, so I could take five points. Or I could take farm points. Let's say I just, I'm, I'm sorry, this is a size three, I would actually have gotten six points there. Uh, let's say I wanted to take um, three points here from the rapeseed, but I want to take farm points from the potato. See, on each tile that you put on the board, there's a number of barns there. You can see two barns in this one, one barn on this one. So what, if I take two points in potatoes, I'll take my color, let's say I'm red, and I'll move up two here. Um, I could have taken it with both of them. I could have taken one point in the rapeseed and two points in the potatoes. And so you can take points on the rapeseed or on, on the potatoes. You can take points in the barn or on the field. If you get one of your cubes up to one of these tiles, you'll take that tile and keep it secret, and at the end of the game you'll reveal that this one, for example, is worth 12 points. Now, as you place these tiles on the board, you, the fields are going to get bigger and bigger. You can see that as time goes by, you'll be able to attach things, and so here I have a beet field that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you can get a lot of points as your turns go by. You can also place tiles on top of other tiles. The only rule is you can't place something on the same type. So I can't place wheat on top of wheat, but I can place them like that. If I want to place a tile, I can't place it so it's overhanging, but I could use one of my five tiles, uh, single tiles, place that down and put a tile on top of it to uh, put them out there. You can also place these single tiles out by themselves instead of one of the tiles from your hand. After you play a tile, you will draw a tile to take its place. The game will progress. There's one uh, set of six tiles, uh, and inside those six tiles is shuffled the end of the game tile. And so when you get to those last six tiles, the game could end at any point, although everyone will get one last turn uh, except for the starting player, but um, everyone has equal number of turns. 
Now, when all your little cubes over here, let's say I'm red, and I get all my red cubes either to or past my first barn. When that happens, I can take my barn and place it on the board in any form. Now, I would hope at this point that there would be this beet farm still left over, so I place it in this beet farm. The reason a farm is useful is two things. One, no one else can score points from this section. They can uh, place tiles and on it later on and try to, to make it smaller, but they can't add to this. They won't score points from it. Also, at the end of my turn, I score points for my farm. So I get one, two, three, four, five, six points every turn, and maybe more if I make my farm bigger. And then when I get a second farm, I can, I can score points from that every turn also. Those will score you every turn, your barns. Um, now, you cannot connect the fields of two barns, so if another player decided they were going to start a beet farm over here, they couldn't connect, the, the two beet farms could not be connected. And that's basically the way the game plays. There's three main ways to score points. By putting a tile out, simply scoring for a big patch of crops. Um, by getting to these tiles first up over here, which will give you a lot of points. If, if you're the first three to get up there, there's only three tiles, so the fourth person to get up there gets nothing. And by scoring the farms where your barns are each turn. At the end of the game, whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Well, I have to say, this is the case of don't judge a book by its cover. Absolutely. Yeah, I uh, forget the theme, farming. I know some people out there, another farming game. This game has as much to do with farming as it has to do with World War II. Agreed. Well, Agreed. no, okay. I guess maybe the fields make sense. and But I, I've never, I, I don't know of any farmlands where they're constantly saying, oh, I'm sorry, but we just cut your farm in half. <laughs> that's, that's largely abstract for sure. It might even have been better as like a kingdoms. Like you have kingdoms that are warring... Against, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that might work too, right, right. And then uh, the farms could be strongholds or something of the sort. Um, definitely, the theme is um, does not make for a good first impression, which is ideally what you'd want from something like this. But if you can get past that, the game itself is quick, it's light, it's highly tactical, it's a really neat package. I think. I'm gonna go beyond. That. I mean, this game is. Really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I loved this game, and I think there's several reasons for that. One, the game is fairly mean. Yes, I, it can be in your face. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, if if you're not in other people's face, you're going to give them the game. Right. And what this is the kind of game that you are helping yourself while hurting somebody else. Like I'm yes. making my field bigger, but cutting yours off at the same Absolutely. time. Absolutely. And if you can do both things simultaneously, then you're doing well. Yes. I also like it because the components, you know, I made fun of how they look per se, but they're, they're, they're quality tiles. It is, it is. Um, my favorite thing probably about it is the, um, well, two things, the simplicity of a turn, in which you play your tile, score either the farm points or the barn points rather, or for the field itself. And I really love also the, uh, the dichotomy between points now and hopefully points later, you know. Right where you can just play the tile, score the points for that field, done, or not score now, but you're working towards that barn, which hopefully later can be cha-ching, and then you're cashing in every round just for having it sit there. Of course, people come after you, but... The game has a really interesting curve. Mm -hmm. You start out, and people are getting a few points, and after a couple turns, you're like, holy moly, I'm scoring like 10, 12 points, 15, 20 points, and... You can either keep scoring that many points and try to pull ahead of everybody else, and that's a very viable strategy. It is. You can ignore the farms completely and just score tons of points. Right on the And then field maybe field. run one of the barn, a couple barn tracks all the way to the top and get, get the, some high point get tiles. The points for the tiles, yeah. Or you can go for the barns and try to score mega farms. If you can get both, if, you're, if you have both barns and you get both of them out, you can get a lot of points, but that's going to happen in the second half of the game, or actually the, the third and fourth fifths of the game. Because in the last fifth of the game, the farms become not nearly as useful, because everyone's destroying them all over the place. Right. You're getting cut off, yes. Um, but it's, it's, just a, it's so interesting how it works together, because if, so let's say Z decides he wants to make this gigantic field and score points in it every turn, then I'll say, well, you know what, thanks, I'll take that as a farm. Mm -hmm. And now he doesn't care about that field anymore, he has to destroy that and build something else. Absolutely right. Yeah, the more you help yourself, you're you're leaving that set up for the next guy. 
And if someone's doing that, hey, rush that barn, slap it down on it. Now it's yours. Now people have to try to cut you off. So I, I, the end of the game sneaks up on you, I feel. It's so quick, you know. It, it's great because it has that tension to it where you go, oh boy, those tiles are running out a little faster than I was hoping. So I like that a lot. The game's quick. It leaves you at that moment where you never feel like, okay, this could end now. I always feel like, oh, I want one more turn. Let me get one more turn. You know, right. I think that's great in a game like this. So. And it's back and forth, and sometimes the tiles make the difference. The, the biggest problem this game has is really the theme because I think the type of people who like this Mm -hmm. won't be as interested in the theme because it's it's a tile laying game but it's a fierce back and forth light medium game this mm -hmm. looks like it's a heavier euro to some degree from the way the box is set up right and i mean i literally i'm and like guys looks, this is good i promise it's good right type thing right. yeah and it also just has that very dry feel like i'm going to be sitting over here working on my own board don't look at me don't bother me that's not it at all you're going to be in each other's faces right away so, absolutely, I'm right there with you. The theme, the cover, while technically very beautiful, does not evoke the, the feel. You know, I feel like someone should be punching this guy in the face on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I love to see this reprint it, and it's, it's out of print. Well, I don't know if it's out of print. You probably can find the copies of it easily enough, but they were printed only in Europe, although you can buy a copy with English rules, mm -hmm. and there's no, there's no, all the components are language independent. Correct. So if you can get a copy, try it out. I certainly think you'll like it. It's light. Uh, the box says 45 minutes to an hour. I think it's closer to 30 to 45 minutes. Absolutely. Unless you're playing with really slow people, it's not that long of a game. It is quick. So, highly recommend it for me. Um, Heartland. Or, yeah. Where does I fragged the You tried it. I, Hooray. Thumbs up here. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.